Hi, welcome to the Chamber of Spoilers. So for my first video, I thought I would do a worst of 2020 book reviews because what gets clicks more than negative shit? I promise in the future, I will talk about things that I like. Well, I thought it might be fun to just kick things off uh, with being real mean about things I don't like. So I'm just gonna, oh, hi bud, can you not? Okay, I guess this is your show now too. All right, apologies for intermittent cat footage. Hey bud, can you get down? No. Gotta get demonetized. <laughs> Hi baby, can you chill out? All right, oh hello, hello, hello. So the worst things I've read this year by far. Confessions of a Fat Cosmo Girl by Hazel Dixon Cooper. Just legitimate gutter trash. I don't read a lot of diet books um, because I like having a healthy body image and don't want my eating disorder to get out of control again. But I was reading it for a gig and it's so awful and fat phobic, you wouldn't believe. Like at one point she legitimately says, fat isn't, big isn't beautiful. She says, big isn't beautiful. And I'm just like, okay, where are you going with this? Uh, and where she was going was the garbage because this book is not worth reading. Like if you're interested in diet books, no shade. I'm sure they're helpful for some people. I loved the life-changing magic of tidying up, but some people love clutter. Like, it's totally fine to read diet books. I do think this one is just not worth anybody's time. I can't think of a single person who would benefit from it. Fat phobia is not <laughs> cash money. <laughs> hey, hey, no, no, not for biting. No one asked for this by Cassie David. This book has gotten pretty panned. Um, I think it's pretty bad. I read parts of it. I wrote a review of it. There are parts of it I really enjoyed, but overall I thought the conceit was just super self-centered, uh, which a memoir can be, but like memoirs are supposed to be contemplative. They're supposed to be, have a point. <laughs> and the point of this book seemed to be, I'm mentally ill and rich, uh, which is one thing, one of those things I can relate to. But at the same time, it just seemed like we can sell this book. Let's sell this book regardless of any actual merit. Um, which I mean, The Perfect Date by Evelyn Lozada and Holly Lorenz, um, or Holly Lorenc. I enjoyed the experience of reading this book, but reading, looking back on like the actual plot of it, the main character is kind of a pick me bitch. Um, like she's different than all of the other girls who are not hardworking and like the, romantic rival who isn't really a romantic rival is also a criminal and all of the women who get like more than a couple characterizations um have primarily negative attributes and it's just kind of like i don't know if it's the kind of thing you're interested in like i you can find better books that are about like fake dating uh that turns into real dating um, it is a pleasant thing to read. It's just when you look back on it, it's like these are a lot of really poisonous tropes, like about women. And also like the male main character kind of sucks. Like he doesn't really have a lot of, like they're all, they read very young as romantic leads and they kind of suck. Black Witch Magic by Mila Nix. I really did not enjoy this book. Um, I was really excited about it because I love when voices reads um, and I love any books about the supernatural. I love romance. This book seems like it was going to be all of those things at the same time. It wasn't so intolerable, but overall it was a negative reading experience. Um, the pacing was bad. The reveals were bad. Like it was just real bad. I wrote a review about it on All About Romance, which I'll link in the description. It was just not a good book. <laughs> like I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Like I, I, I almost never give a book a really terrible score unless I think I can't think of a single person who would enjoy it. For me, books are highly individual and almost anything that I hate, I think someone else can find a reason to enjoy, you know? But in this case, in the case of all the books that I'm gonna talk about today, there is literally not an audience for this book. Nobody will like it who I can think of as a reader. War Paint by J.J. Maya. It's another contemporary romance. Um, it was really, really bad. It was just such an unpleasant thing to read. The main character is a couple light bulbs, sort of a chandelier, if you're gonna get my meaning. She's not smart. She doesn't plan ahead. She's not self-aware. She's got this obsession with like 
fate, um, which isn't like the worst thing. Like, like your protagonist can be quirky, right? But she seems like a collection of quirks and her responsibilities shoved into a 110 pound Irish woman, um, which isn't exactly what I'm looking to read when I'm looking for a plucky protagonist looking to make it on her own. Also, right away on the first page, you know that the man who we think is going to be the main line of interest is trash. Um, I'm actually a really big women's fiction fan. A lot of romance readers don't love women's fiction. I enjoy it. Um, but I just found this book to be so unreadable and very disappointing because the conceit seemed interesting. Should Actually by Lindy West. I was so disappointed by this book. Just irreparably disappointed. I don't think I'll ever go into another Lindy West book with the same joy that I did reading Shrill. Um, it's really difficult, I'm sure, when you have other books coming out, when you're a writer, uh, when your first book is just so well received um, by the community you're part of and by other writers, but at the same time, you can't follow it up with low effort crap. Like, reading this book, it felt like she'd written it in like a month, gone back and done copy edits, and then just sent it to the press. Like it just felt so low effort, felt so like, like there's some of that Lindy West like voice in there, but it's not the vulnerability that we've come to expect from her after reading Shrill. And it's not the, um, it's just not entertaining. Like I was skimming in parts. And when I read Shrill, I read it in like an hour, was just glued to the page the entire time. I was really disappointed by this because I thought it would be really analytical and it was really just a stream of consciousness review of a bunch of different movies that I'm not interested in, don't care about. So there's that. Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. Another huge disappointment. I'm beginning to see a pattern in this list. It's books from authors who I love who've disappointed me this year. So Marissa Meyer is the author of The Lunar Chronicles, which is such an amazing YA series. I recommend it to everyone. I hate people who harsh on YA and claim that it's all just like dystopian fantasy. It is a lot of dystopian fantasy, but it's good. Um, you know what's in the YA section of my library? The Book Thief, so shut your mouth. Um, but I loved her books in the past. I haven't read her other series. I think it's Arch Enemies, but I was really excited to read this book. She hasn't written any contemporary romance that I was aware of. Um, and I was looking for something, you know, light. This is not a year where I've been getting into like really difficult, heavy reads. I think for a lot of people right now, what we're looking for is consolation and enjoyment. And when I read this book, it dragged, it was about twice as long as it needed to be, which is unfortunate. When a book is that much longer, it's because it's not because there's a lot of substance in it. If it's too long for the story in it, it's because the author didn't spend enough time in edits or because they couldn't figure out what was actually important to the crux of the story. I was so disappointed. You can't even, you can't even understand because the books that she's written in the past that I've read are so well done. She's like spent so clearly lovingly putting them together and plotted out and like I'm not a huge action person I was so into it I was so into it I love her books and then this maybe it's because her strength is maybe the fantasy elements but her characters are also wonderful and the characters in this book are pretty okay also the main character is so unlikable and you don't have to have likable protagonists and I think likability for women is always like a problem because of sexism like people are always going to say even a likable protagonist who makes mistakes are going to say she's unlikable she's flawed yeah she's a character and a person what do you expect people are flawed but I just found it just so hard to sympathize with her the idea of a flawed main characters that you're supposed to still either root for them or like them in some way and it was just so disappointing to go from like a real high with her like I've had a really high opinion of Marissa Meyer as a writer and to go from that to being like oh I might not pick up anything by her again is really disappointing like I can't I can't really wrap my mind around it other disappointments for this year. Oh, No Offense by Meg Cabot. I saw this book on a lot of lists where they were like, looking forward to this. And I was like, okay. I really love Meg Cabot. I read some of the Princess Diaries books because, you know, millennial. Um, and also I love the movies. 
but I really have loved her adult fiction in the past as well. She's got some really great adult fiction that I recommend to anyone who likes adult fiction, romance, snappy stuff. Her banter is amazing. She's always written great banter. She's always written great like internal stuff. She's got great characters that develop and grow and really have a journey from point A to point B and I've always loved that about her. Um, her epistolary books are a little lazier and you can definitely tell that because like a good epistolary book like like Attachments by Rainbow Roll, that you can tell a lot of development happens on the page. But for her epistolary books in the past, Meg Cabot, I found them to be kind of lackluster, but she's written some really great stuff that I've enjoyed in the past. I read a long time ago, I read uh, Size 12 is Not Fat. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know if it passes muster in this day and age, but I used to like it when I was a teenager. Um, and I also really loved her um, her Queen of Babel books, which were such like really formative for me in terms of like um, kind of rejecting a lot of notions about what like relationships should be. And she has a couple good other like supernatural type books. My Cabot is just unfortunately a pretty uneven writer for me. And when I read No Offense, I just I wanted to not finish it is how bad it was right away. The main character seems to be a functioning alcoholic, which is actually a train that I can take for a lot of her other books as well. I don't know why all these women are drinking so much, but main character is a city employee who gets drunk at a city function and, and like then makes out with another city employee in public. And I'm just like, who are these adults? I wouldn't do that. I am also a city employee. <laughs> like, I, and I also found it to be really bad. Like, and I mean, because I work in a library, I'm, it's, I'm almost done with my library science degree. It's always really frustrating when librarians are portrayed in one way, when they actually don't like, when, when librarians write about their jobs, it's noticeable, it's good. But no librarian would keep their books in a bathroom. And I think we're also done with cop romance. The cop in this book was super one note, bad tone, like it was just, it didn't slap in 2020. As I don't think I would have enjoyed this even a couple years ago. It's just such a poorly written, badly, like I, I think I saw a reviewer basically say, it's white women solving mysteries. And that's what it is at this point. And you need more. Like what she's had in the past is ambitious women making choices about their lives and figuring out where they've gone wrong in the past and changing. This book is basically just about a woman realizing that she's a little bit different than a guy and that they actually can like make it work because they're both nice law abiding citizens who can be like patronizing to people of color. Like that's basically the whole thing. And I just found it to be so poorly toned in this day and age, especially given the racial reckoning in this country right now is a lot. American Royals by Catherine McGee. This came out a while ago. I hated it so much. I was so excited about this book. Like I had seen so many good things. I had heard um, that it was really popular. And a lot of the time, like in my line of work, when you see something going out a lot, it's not always good. American Dirt had a really long waiting list and we know how that worked out. But I was pretty excited about this book because I thought like, oh, it's an interesting, like I, I thought it might kind of be from the red, white and royal blue um, pantheon of like, pantheon of similar books. Like I thought it might be like interesting and it might have a, you know, the low bar of interesting. I thought it might have like something interesting and good to say about how all systems are flawed and about how like, the America that we know isn't necessarily what could have always happened. Like I'm interested in alternate history books. I think it looks really cool. And the cover was really cool. I wrote a whole blog post about why I hated it, which I will also link in the description. But basically it completely failed to live up to expectations. I guess maybe if it hadn't been so popular, I wouldn't have expected so much from it. But the only interesting character is supposedly the villain, um, who maybe she'll get a redemption arc. I don't even know if I'm gonna pick up the next one. It was so torturous to read. All the characters are boring and it's basically just a rip off of the Royals, which is a better TV show on AMC that you should just go watch. Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly. I read this for a class. Um, it's so terrible. Um, 
the book seemed like two or three different books smashed together. Like the author wanted to write a book about spoiled prep school kids, but also wanted to write a book about the French Revolution, but also wanted to write a book about um, like grieving a lost person, but also wanted to write a book about living in Paris and being an artist and um, and like being a musician. And it just made no goddamn sense. The book was a disaster. So much was dropped and then picked up again and then dropped again. So much, like the author really dropped the ball on this and it has a lot of positive reviews, but it also has that unfortunate Hollywood mental health conceit, which is that like, I threw my antidepressants out the window. She literally has like a similar line to, we threw our antidepressants and our antipsychotics out the window of the cab and have been fine ever since because we moved to Paris and everything's fine. Like, I just, I don't know how to tell you that mental illness isn't cured by moving to a pretty place. Like, no matter where you go, there you are. New York doesn't make you depressed, honey. Like, it just reveals you. I hate any book that like, covers mental illness in a way of like, and then I fell in love and I was fixed, or, and then I moved and I was fixed, and then I quit my job and I was fixed. Also, this book is just like, there's a way to write with rich people in a way that you don't hate them for their privilege. Like Crazy Rich Asians did a great job of writing rich people in a way that you could still like and enjoy them without making them so out of touch and so despotic that you found them absolutely despicable. Um, the rich people in this book are terrible and I hate all of them. Like the only good characters, there are no good characters. I found this book awful. I hated it so much. Neanderthal Steaks Human by Penny Reed. I hate any romance that hates on other romance. This romance calls itself a smart romance, as though like excluding all other romance from that genre. Hi, I've read lots of romance that doesn't make me any less smart. And also um, enjoying romance, like I just hate any romance that like is a not like other girls thing. It's exhausting. Um, and I read it and it was not smart or interesting. The main character seemed awfully dumb. Um, everything was really poorly established. As it stood, the only barrier between the main characters was like an ethical one that could have easily been figured out if they had just spoken to each other. Like, I'm not about this whole adults who can't communicate thing. And also the idea that like, their relationship is in any way salvageable when he's just constantly lying to her. And also like the idea that like a person is more human than you because they're attractive is not an idea that an intelligent person has ever had. Like I, as an intelligent woman, have never looked at a man and been like, huh, he's really hot, different species. The last one I'm gonna talk about is the Central Park Pact. Um, which I wrote something about and I'll be linking in the description, but oh my God, is this thing just irredeemably awful. You might probably see a theme here of like stuff that seems hyped up, but isn't great. The first book of the series is written from the point of view of somebody who was born working class, working poor, and becomes rich as an entrepreneur. And there are so many moments in these books that are just so unrelatable. Almost none of these women have to work for money anymore, if they ever did. Two of them were born rich. Um, and it's just so unrelatable. that These women bond over having the same pair of shoes and the same watch given to them. They are out of touch. And like the books are just also so white, like, you're gonna have three white rich protagonists living in New York City who can buy real estate twice in one year in New York, okay? I really hated these books because it just doesn't like display a connection to reality. Like I really didn't like these books because I found it really difficult to relate to these like waspy heroines who's either either all of their problems were self-created or all of their like it doesn't make you feel sympathy for them I understand that it's difficult to like lose a partner or like the, the main conceit of these books is that 
these three women were all in a relationship with the same man and he was cheating on all of them. The wife, the girlfriend, the mistress. This is something we've seen before in like three different movies and a bunch of books. But I would give it points for originality if literally anything about it was original. They all have different hair colors, of course, because women aren't allowed to have different hair color. Women aren't allowed to star in the same media and look alike. Um, they all are rich, which is not super relatable for me. Like, I'm pretty sure most of the readers of this book, of these books, aren't going to be independently wealthy socialites. Um, or people who have like started a company and become independently wealthy. And most of these women's problems are self-created. Most of these women, um, they have no reason to be friends. They all were sleeping with the same guy when he died. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll be coming out with an actual video about things that I did like in 2020 soon. Um, there are a lot of really amazing books that came out this year or books that I read this year that will be out next year. So I'll talk about those soon. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe um, or don't. <laughs> if you're interested in uh, reading my words but not seeing my face or listening to my voice, I totally understand. I get tired of me too. Um, my blog is linked in the description. You can also find my website. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye!